Right then folks, here we go with the transmission. I have done lots of these gearboxes and yeah, I found them okay. A lot of people trip up on them. So what I have done here is I have got all of the parts out on the manual. That's leaning up there. I have a paper clip here because we can flick over with the paper clip and look at the gears and we can see that the 38 tooth gear is exactly the same size as that so that's for reference it's good uh, good reference I put a paper clip on there so I can just go from one to the other and what I have done here for you is I've put the first one which is section 20 this is gear shaft A basically that is this one which is a clip and this is um, BJ1 haven't written that on there so that is uh, BJ1 one we have a clip I haven't put these down so this one here is the metal gear which is 22 that part there is um, SA2 which I think is in the blister pack, can't remember. And the smaller plastic gear is the 27 tooth. And the larger gear, let me just have a look at the manual, that's the 36 tooth. So, gear shaft A. I'm going to roll that up there because this gap this gap here is the longer one this gap here is the shorter one so clip brass hex clip 27 two clips 20 tooth metal clip SA2 metal and the 36 tooth that is it for gear shaft A gear shaft B is all these parts so we'll start at the front of the transmission on the inside we've got clip and C5 I've written 5 on there I've wrote that 5 on there then we have a bearing now you can see that these are not the usual shielded bearings because these are sealed inside the transmission so they don't need to be rubber sealed so they're just metal sh uh, shielded then we've got a 44 tooth um, metal bearing not the metal bushings which are those those colored ones and these colored ones you can see that the smaller one is slightly darker in color but uh, we're not using the, I think with Borium, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, so then we have uh, BJ2, then we have J8, B7, which is just a flat washer, and that comes out of um, the bushings bag. We have two bushings, not bearings. So they're metal bushings and they go in J7. And then we have the 38 tooth with a couple of bearings either side. We have a clip with BJ2 either side. J6 bearing, 30 tooth bearing and clip. And that is gear shaft B, which is this section here. I'll flash a picture up on screen as I'm going. Tools I need, screwdriver, pliers and a bit of glue. There's all the parts ready to go in after we've assembled 
the two gear shafts. Right, I'm using that. I was going to use this for sealing in the um, screws on the end caps, which is just clear nail varnish. It's like a thread but like thread lock, but it's not as as sticky. It it cracks off easy. So let me start off. Uh, something else before I, I do actually start, I want to show you something. This is a picture that I printed off. I took it off the end of the box, um, and all I've done is enhanced it. Simple. So that's that's really quite good because you can see that gear shaft, the yellow part just here is let me get that. So this orange part is bearing, then C clip, then the plastic J5, the bushing or bearing. This is the 44 tooth, this is another bushing or a bearing if you're gonna uh, hop up that. And then this silver bit here is BJ2 with j8 so yeah you can you can see what that is pretty straightforward right let me get you mounted up on the tripod and we'll get this done first thing on the left side going forward is the um e-clip so there's no need to wear it off then next is this brass um, BJ1 so that fits on there like that the next we have a hex profile in there but not in there so only can go on this way and then we put another e-clip on here I'm going to try and keep my fingers out let's uh, get in a little closer Always take your time. Never any rush. There we go. And then another e clip goes on there, and I can use my block of wood just to rest that on there and press down. So that goes on there. The metal gear has splines inside it. So that just slides over this one into there. And then that one is held in by another E-clip. So stand, you can't see anything because I'm getting my hands in the way. So that E-clip is on there. I'll just get that on there and then another e clip which is simply oops they don't ping off when I apply pressure to them that will just drop them so that one's on there and these two gears this one has teeth on the inside and this one has a bevel on the or a collar on this side and that just fits in there and then that just slides on there that's retained by an e-clip and the last e-clip is holding the whole thing together And that is gear shaft A. So we have an E clip, plastic gear, metal gear insert, just a metal gear retained stationary by two E clips. Then we have the next plastic gear, which is, I um, can't remember what number it was, and that's that one. It's retained in there with a, an E clip the brass insert and an e-clip and that is
A. Drive shaft A. Okay, here we go with drive shaft B. Grab yourself a brew. And sit tight. Now I'm going to put this middle clip just here between these two bearings. I'm going to put that in the middle. So then I have to walk from both ends to, let me just put a dividing line just there. So obviously that is my middle there. So, I'm going to put this bearing in here, push that in there, and push the next bearing in there. And with these slots facing this way, push that all the way on there, and that should spin freely. Now, it is asking you in the instructions to grease this portion, but seeing as we're using roller bearings, we don't need to use grease on that part and what we do need to do with that is hold that in with an e-clip and then we get this part which is BJ2 and they're splined onto there and then we get um, this e-clip let me just grab that and we hold that onto there with another e-clip and then we use this one which is J6 and we just slide that on there that does not move on the gear shaft but that will slide so what we need to do is we need to lube that up so I just spread a generous amount on there Here's my tissue, let me get grease everywhere. So you can see that's got two slots that way, but it's got the locator pins in that side. So they face that way. So just work that on there. That feels quite nice on there. And then we get this gear put that on there and we push in these two steel shielded bearings not need rubber because it's in internally and then that is telling you to lubricate this piece but because we're using steel roller bearings that just goes on like that and then we use the last of the um, Eclipse on this end. Okay, so that is from the centre outwards. And that does move between those two gears. And then holding on to this side, we have J7, which is this piece. Now, this piece does not rotate on the um, on the shaft this actually slides more so what we're going to do is we use two of the bronze copper mix type bushings on there so what I do with those is make sure that they don't come out I'm just going to put a small, very, oh, 
very small amount of uh, glue on there. Not too much. Uh, there we go. And then we press that in there. Use a tool to just press that firmly in. There's my engineering pliers. There we go. Get your tissue and just wipe off any of that glue that's come in there. And then exactly the same with this one. Just a small dab of uh, glue. Very, very small amount. Because they are quite a snug fit and... That is J7. And then that one slides in there like so. And that locates into the back of that gear. So that you can see that that slides there. So we must, before we go any further, just get some uh, grease and just apply it on there. Wipe my finger with a tissue, and then I just normally twist it on so it goes inside the thing, and then get some more and just wipe it around that. And before we have an accident with the glue, put the lid on, more slurp. And then obviously we have an e-clip on there. I tell you I keep dropping them. I'm gonna try something different that I have done before is to hold this C clip like this. So I just push that on like that. Then we have this flat washer, right, BH7, that goes over there. Then we have this collared um, thing here, so I'll just leave that there, because what we'll do is we'll put this steel one on here, because that one just fits over it, and because that one slides, we use a little bit of lubrication on that and remember that these in these pe pegs here they face this way and this one faces that way and the same as this one I just get a little bit more lubrication in there and then we have the next gear they just press in there these have the slots in there and this is relatively flat so those slots go in towards the middle we put the next bearing on like that J5 on there like that and the last e-clip goes in like that. Why didn't I do what I did before? I know why. Because I'm an idiot. Not really. So there we go. There is gear shaft B. These, what they call selectors, they slide. These slide this way 
and this way so they actually fit in there together like that and that one locks into there and then when you shift gear they lock into there that one moves forward and that one moves out before we move on to the next uh, step we have to do step 22 I almost forgot which is the selector forks let me uh, come up here a little bit get in shot two springs three selector forks and uh, oh, our favorite parts just here two little eclips so let me come over this way a little bit and I'll show you what we're going to do with these. Just going to put these really small eclipse in place in the middle. Come on, don't. Shall I try with this? Just gripping it. That works. And fiddly or what? And they work just make sure they do rotate on there so there we go we have a shorter piece here and a longer piece here and we need to um, just lubricate this up a little bit I'm not going to put any more on until I have this one on here. I like this grease because it's a slightly thicker grease, silicon based grease that um, and then we put J1 over there like that. And then we put one of the other selector forks on there. So that's basically like that. And I'll just put a little bit more slippy stuff on there. I like this grease because it, it's a little thicker and it doesn't fling off of the um, gears as much. So. I put grease inside that spring because I have lost a few of these springs and that isn't going to fall off because it's got grease in it. So I'm going to hold on to that and this one, let's get some grease on there and this brass part faces to the outer part. Just get some grease on there. I've just edited the other video of the um, front axle and I've been listening to Jerry Reed on Deezer whilst I was doing that. I'm just going to use this um, grease around there. And I'll just put that there like that. Like my hands. I will be getting more grease on them. I think that's about five English pounds. Five worth pounds off of eBay. Just super lewd. Synthetic grease. Good stuff. Right. Here we go with step 23 that one there 
and that is basically the taller part of the motor motor casing with only three of these this two small screws and two small I do apologize for reaching across in front of you um, so yeah that's uh, that's that so all we do is we use this uh, smaller part just comes through you see this adjuster for the pinion gear that's facing me I push those through there right I'm oh, going out the shot so I'll put them on there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, nail varnish and I'm just going to dab these two nuts and put them in there and the nail varnish will hold those in it'll also go into the thread slightly here's the other one in there and then just dab that in there you can use thread lock if you want you don't have to but I've only ever had one come out and then put that in there like that put your two fingers over the holes line them up put one in there and one in there and then just come on take out a grip you wouldn't do that with a glass of wine would you because you wouldn't so now we have these three we're going to have this one, this one, and this one. I'll leave this one with the next to the brass collar. Right, leave this one out. So I'm just going to get one screw. I will be um, using a little dot of nail varnish on there. And then just... using that one on finger tight put a screw through the other uh, top one just a little bit of glazing on that it does act like a, a non-aggressive uh, thread lock great for alloy wheels one, something that you're likely to take apart a lot then clear nail varnish is a much better option than uh, thread lock um, so we can just knit those up and that's how it should look and we'll put a shielded bearing in not a big one in there then we can get one of these parts let's put a bearing in there stick that in there and then the fiddly fiddly part 
it does say put grease on these but we're having uh, none of that because these are roller bearings so we get these these gears because this is the, the motor end the first one goes in like that the second one let's put the top one in first that's why we leave the bottom one out and that goes in there like that and then this shift rod the two um, off from the center are uh, at this point at the top now this is the fiddly bit because we have to get these selector forks inside these so what I'm going to do is move that out of the way I'm going to pull that one out slightly until I can get let's try it this way Might move across a little bit, not too far over. Move that one over there, move that one over there, and drop those. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, we're in. And then feed that into there. Come on, get in like so and then we can fit the last um, connecting rod so what I'll do with this one I'll put this the bolt through there then just dab the thread with that And then just wind that on like so, making sure nothing comes off. Taking that bottom gearbox brace and doing that. Then getting the other end plate with two of those. Put a bearing in each one. And it does matter which way around this goes, so make sure you get it the right way. And then push those in through there. You see how that is larger that way than it is um, that way. So the larger part goes on the inside. So the spring can push against it. And if you get these in straight, they just snap in. And then simply push everything in place. How about that? So I'm just going to button these, button these up. So I'm going to get a little bit of uh, friendly friendly thread lock stick a bit in that one let's get the other three not to go out of um, shot let's 
just give that one a dab and that one a dab so we don't have to mess about with it anymore because that one will just sit in there if I didn't drop everything around because I'm looking at the screen and not what I'm doing noticed I haven't put a lot of grease in just yet because I don't want to get it all over me that's how that rolls let's get the drive cup on there is a small spacer um, what is that? This is section 25. This is J4. So J4 fits in there, which kind of gives it a good seal. And then obviously this goes on there. And I do need some um, thread lock because I am with my grub screw just a little tiny bit on there Let's get some of that off and then just push it down to the thing and then just try and lift it up a little tiny bit not too much and then can you see in there how that scrub screw is going in there so give that a little um just so you can feel a little torque on the screwdriver And then we have these two small parts here. Um, we should be putting, um, I believe, a small circlip on the front and rear of there. So here's two of those. We're way out of shot. So there's the two. Um, eclipse so I'm going to put the first one on on the back so I'll just grip it by the very raggedy edge and then just push that on just make sure it settles into the groove and then the same with this one I'll get a grip of that and then stick that oops and then stick that in there and then just make sure it settles in the groove there we go and then this slides on here and then this small ball joint, that is the ball joint for the um, shifter rod. And that is the wrong one. What did it do? There it is. It's a black one. So if you just screw that in a couple of, couple of turns and then stick that on there. Um, need the Tamiya box spanner because the smallest side of that fits just over it and that's all the way up to the e-clip and just put a little weight on that and that is good to go it doesn't matter that that rotates because the uh, shifter rod does Um, hold it 
into the position where it needs to be. So. BF2 to hold the motor in. Now, didn't we say that that motor, which is very good, and although it is very reliable, it draws a hell of a lot of current. So, I always suggest swapping it out. I like these Carson Poison. Carson Poison motors. I get these from Aztec Models. Um, I will leave a link below as to where these go if I forget to put that link. Leave a comment saying you forgot to put the link and I will edit and leave the link. So this is the way I'm going to put this in. I'm going to put it in with uh, the wording at the top and the red that way. doesn't really matter. Just wondering actually. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. I'll put it that way. So when I look down from above, from underneath, if I have the truck upside down, I can see the, the writing. A little bit of thread lock on there. No, I haven't forgot the pinion. That goes on in a second. So that just screws in there. Not too tight because we need that to swivel up and down. And then we have a washer and where's the other screw? Ah, it's over here. And again, where's the little bit of uh, thread lock stops the motor from coming apart um, but coming loose not that I've really ever had one come loose um, right we need one more grub screw which is here in this bag which I've made a hole in the side here we go. And where's my grub screw driver? And standard application of thread lock. Where's my pinion? Always the stock kit pinion. Never had a problem with these. And then just until it um, starts to show through. You just see it started to show through there, look. And we find the flat part on the motor, which typically is pointing downwards. So there it is on there. And make sure, if I get that, make sure the pinion grub screw. is not level with this right so when that rotates round the pinion doesn't hit this gear so I'm going to make sure that that gear is level with this gear here and then we are good to go so that just needs to come off a little bit and then we can uh, snug that in just a little bit of tension on the uh, screwdriver now the mesh on there have it too tight it will make a noise if 
you have it too loose it will make a noise we need to find the sweet spot how do we do that for years I have used a piece of paper right stick it in there and then pinch the motor so it corrugates the paper like that and then tighten that down tighten that one up and then when we take this paper out come on there we go that is now out get that bit of paper out of there and that is meshed beautifully and I don't know if you can see but there is a very minute bit of play between this gear and this gear and that will give you the perfect mesh for the gears top tip yeah just a little bit of paper thank you Tamia you can use any paper normal um, A4 paper just tear a little strip so that is it Now, before we put it together, what I want to do is to make sure all these moving parts are greased up, especially these rotating parts on the shifter forks. So, I'm just going to dab that on there. And inside these where it engages and on the gears themselves this um, synthetic grease is slightly um, stickier than the ceramic grease of Tamiya this is not going to be um, harsh with the plastics it's purely synthetic and now, let's get some everywhere because once it starts spinning it's going to go in all the places it needs to go so don't uh, worry about it too much so get that in there get that in there get some on that gear up there get some in there Right, let me just wipe my fingers off. Can you spot it? That feels so smooth. I forgot to put that on. But you know what? I've put it on. I forgot to put it on so many times. Um, basically, it just stops anything going down these vents right but it's not really gonna be detrimental so i'm not gonna put that on i haven't put it on a lot of uh, my builds so yeah that feels very smooth indeed now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna wear that up with a battery pack 
this is just going to have um, 7.2 volts straight through it. This is going to go everywhere. You can hear the motor bedding in. And let's reverse the wires. And because it is a, a DC motor, it will happily go both ways. And you can see it's just started to fling a bit of grease around. So, no big deal as long as it is in all the important places. And that looks uh, pretty good to me. Don't have to fill these up. I know some people like to go um, crazy. They say more is better. Um, not really, because my original King Hauler, which I built in 1993, is in my snowman truck my Kenworth W900 and that is still going strong on the original gears and it is still as quiet as ever since I changed out the metal gears which I thought might be better in fact before I switch off this video I'll show you a transmission that I thought I'd put in look at that now you would think that that would be good but trust me that is so noisy it's got all the um, metal selectors in there now that's um, way too noisy So yeah, I learnt the hard way, I spent the money, spent the time, spent the effort on putting metal gears in and didn't like it. Stick with the stock, as they say, well, as I say, nobody says that except me. And uh, before we box this in, I'm going to show you how this works, so let me just go down to there right I don't know how well this is going to work out but I'm going to connect the motor to the battery and then I'm going and um, and then hopefully oh come on let me hold them in there that's better so that's rotating, so that's settled with these springs either side in second gear. If I push that forward, I don't know if you can see, that's shifted into lower gear and then that's spinning quicker and then I push it to the back and it shifts up a gear. That's in second, and that's in third. See how that first thing there, that engages? And when it engages with this middle one, the middle one doesn't engage until these two together push both forks together. And this one stays where it is. So just that front one this is the front one moves that way and then up both of them move to the back for another gear and that is the 
gearbox. Look at that. Isn't it a thing of beauty? Right, zoom out. And let's get this buttoned up. Made an EC EC3 adapter. I like EC3 connectors. The small XT90s. Um, overkill EC5s a mm, bit more overkill um, I like the um, EC3s they're easy to solder uh, no each ring required right let's get this transmission casing on so quite simply it fits snugly around the ends like that and then we have one two three four five six millimeter bolts with black nuts so i'll put that there All right here we go back again and nothing exciting's happened in fact absolutely nothing's happened apart from me getting these um fixings out of the out of the box because I didn't do it and they weren't six millimeter screws they are eights which is parts bag A it will tell you this is number um, 25 no it's not it's number 26 can't read because I'm not looking so that's them two Come over here a bit, a bit and then I'm not going to be blocking your view. Time is it? 5.45 p.m. Time for my tea, I think. I'm going egg noodles with well, noodles with um, long grain rice and meatballs that's my tea right no rattly rattly on there here's a little thing I want to show you heat shrink doesn't matter what color I use um, clear because I have loads in abundance and I cut a short length and in fact let me cut it to length so I'm not fannying about fannying about and basically what that does is that kind of gives you a dust cap so I'm going to push that over there and that's going to go over that grub screw and if I just go a little bit further and should have got that my micro jet and just just shrink that on there and that makes a beautiful dust cover because I don't want any dust getting in there I do run this outdoors are we zoomed out yes we are right where I put the frame Frame is here. Dun, dun, dun. Let me get rid of that crappy gearbox. So I need to cut another piece of heat shrink.
and just put that over over there it's only a dust cover it's not going to save the world but it's just going to prevent a little bit of wear that is a little bit long so I'm just going to get um, a suicide blade I call them just just trim that off so that's just nice and then and that just stops that um, grub screw from coming off I will do these um, by simply removing this bolt here and this bolt so that axle will just come out I'll, in fact I'm going to do that now right where's my um, nut spinner should have uh, thought about this way before I um, button it up but I've just thought about it that's not going to work on that side because the differential is slightly closer to the nut, the nylock nut. So I'll just put those fixings there for a second and they can just switch up. That can just tilt out of the way like that. They just rock backwards and forwards. And then I'm just going to cut. Two short pieces of heat shrink. There is a knack to getting these on, and I think it's that way. Yeah. Let's up to there. Trim that off with a blade before I shrink it. it won't start that's better so it's not there maybe if I shrink it first This one so long. Just trim that down so it's long enough. And that will hold in that grub screw there. And stop um, any okay, let's uh, trim that off now. I think that blade has had its day. It has. Let's 
like that end up. Excellent. So now we can, it does ask you to put some lubrication on these. So we'll put that in there. And we shall put some in there. Remember, it won't fling out the sides because this bit here is covered. So now that can go in. Come on, get him. In there. Just offers a little bit of protection. Because if these two axles do um, articulate like this, you know, you, there is a little bit of movement. So I'll just go ahead and put these step bolts back in each side like that. And then grab the nut with the needle nose and you can't see anything let me do it this way i'm getting all cack handed got this tune inside my head because uh, I was listening to a little bit of Jerry Reed as I was um, get over here get over here um, listening to Jerry Reed as I was editing the video of the front axle so hmm, that was good now we need to put in the transmission. All right, get those cables up out of the way. And this is step 27. This is the last step. And if you look at um, this picture here, you will see that the gear shift side goes in first and it will just fit straight in. And that is how it goes. And we go to this bolt hole here, which is right next to this step um, bracket. And before we bolt that in, we just turn it over because we need to fit the main drive shaft, which is over here. And again, just a bit of uh, preventative treatment in there and in that one getting it everywhere don't wipe it on your, your trousers wipe it on the tissue then we can have that um, fit just in there we can have that fit just snugly in there and then with these four are the eight mil six mil from parts bag um what way on 27 six mil four parts bag f so we just simply oops Get a grip. Just whipping them in with my fingers. So I always like to get all the bolts in 
before I nip them up. That's that one. And the last one to hold in the front part of the gearbox. And that is in. So I can just put a little bit of tension on all of them. Maybe three quarters of a turn. Just don't strip the aluminium threads out of here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is steps. Uh, what was that? That was steps 20 to 27. We are storming ahead now. So guys, there we have it. The drivetrain is complete. We have the front steer axle in, we have the gearbox, the motor, the upgraded motor, and we have holes drilled in, these cross members for the wiring to go to the back, we have the rear drive axles on. Everything is good, everything is perfect. And, if you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Um, that helps my channel. Um, yeah, subscribe. Um, check out the previous videos. And if you want to see that steering modification in action, I'll put a link below to the video I've done previously. I will be showcasing that on this build, so not to worry. But yeah, subscribe, like, share. And next will be a bit of bright work. A bit of mud flaps, fifth wheel, fitting all this onto the back. And we're gonna go through the fuel tanks and the steps. And that's going to be the next episode. So, thank you for watching and see you next time.